ready to go. Only an hour late. <laughs> right, now there's a little tool belt he's got going on here. These European elevators are absurd. <laughs> They're so small. They're so small. Like, we're not very big people. And we barely fit. <laughs> Morning, morning. y'all. Welcome to day 34. 34, yes. Of the Camino de Santiago. We started on April 23rd and is now May 25th. 25th, May yep. 25th. Yep, yep, yep. So today we are leaving the city of Leon. We've been told a bums for like five days. Oh yeah, but we had to because we were so far behind on work that we had to take extra days <laughs> to try to get caught up. Yeah. And we're kind of caught up. Yeah. So we stayed five nights, we worked four days, and we're about caught up. But now my body doesn't want to move again. I got out of the habit of the everyday walking. So this morning, my body's like, no, 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 we're not doing this anymore. <laughs> so I'm trying to coax it along with coffee. Anywho, today we're going where? Today we're going to San Martin de Camino. San Martin del Camino. Yeah. Um, it's about 24 kilometers. About 24 kilometers. Mm -hmm. And uh, luckily, one of the things we did while we were here in Leon is that we went through and booked every single <laughs> hostel for the rest of the way out. Yep. So unless someone doesn't honor our reservation, we should have a spot for the rest of the time. Thank the Lord. Let's do some walking, people. This better be a shortcut and not the long way around. I got you, boo. This is the train station, and I'm uh, pretty sure this is the bus station here, so pick your pick. So one of the loveliest things about the Camino is that you'll just be walking along and you're bored or tired or feet hurt, and. Then there'll just be a little shack or a little lean-to over on the side and some gloriously nice person is just selling bananas and hot coffee and stamp, Camino Pilgrim stamps and and usually it's like donation only. Just some, I mean I'm sure they get their money back or they maybe they wouldn't continue doing it. I don't know. Maybe they don't. Maybe they're just generous, awesome people. But sometimes it's just like exactly what you needed. Yeah. Right at the moment you needed it. Right at the top of a hill. All of a sudden, it's like coffee and chocolate. Place you know, to go to the bathroom. Place to go pee. Um, so to all you little shops and stands and people who run them, you're awesome. And we're grateful for you. And I hope that you make way more money than you spend on bananas and fresh squeezed orange juice in Nescafe. We're finally getting out of the city. Uh, Still by the interstate right now, but it took several hours to kind of get through, get out of Leon, past the suburb cities and all that. So we're finally on nice gravel dirt path. I prefer that way more than the road. Far, this is the nicest part right here nice and shaded and mm -hmm. feels really good but it's not gonna last too much longer I can see that it's gonna open right back up into the Sun I am loving the Sun I'm tired of being cold yeah that's true I've worn t-shirt and shorts pretty much all day so yeah it's fabulous it's been out it's been awesome
All right, we made it to a little hostel. This is Hostel uh, Albergue La Casa de La Casa Verde. at La Casa Verde. There's only about eight beds. Uh, you got your two showers in here in the storm room and the bathroom's right down the hallway. So it's a cute little place, no internet, no Wi-Fi. So it's really rustic, really nice and peaceful and, and quiet. I just washing my drawers. Not doing nothing interesting here. again this morning. It was so nice and sunny yesterday. Darn big and cold. Uh, we have about 23 kilometers today to go to Astorga, I believe. Yep. So, yeah. Holy moly, I have to stop and put on my best <laughs> Here we go. If you knew. Oh, well, I knew it was going to be cold because I knew we had a chance of rain today, so I knew it was going to be cloudy and probably windy. You're supposed to be my weatherman. <laughs> Ridiculous. It's at the bottom because I thought I was done with it. <laughs> it's good to know where your uh, poncho is too because it is not going to rain. It's not going to rain on us. Oh dear. So we just passed another like, completely dilapidated old building in this region. And all of them have been old albergues. And so it just kind of makes you think like, I guess when the pilgrimage is over a thousand years old, you know, there's bound to be a lot of albergue changing hands and buildings that, you know, are built and then, you know, go up go out of commission and new ones have to be built and um, it's just something you don't think about at the beginning but really and truly I wonder how much um, you know the entire monasteries that are now in ruins that were once hospitals to pilgrims and um, yeah it's just, it's just interesting to think about like what it would have looked like in the Middle Ages compared to now and um, just how much has changed and I don't know it's kind of it's kind of cool. It's like you're being part of history, sort of, because you know it's going to change even more in the next few years. And it's just thoughts for the day. We'll stop over there by the thing and I'll tell the story. Okay. All right, guys, we are in the town of Puerta de Orbigo and Hospitalero de Orbigo. They're kind of like two little towns mixed together. But this is the home of one of the longest and oldest bridges still remaining in Spain. And it used to be a really popular like pilgrim area. It kind of diminished in popularity over the years because somebody built a big like monastery and uh, albergue on the other side of the river or something. But anywho, so as you can see behind me, there's still like a jousting arena, which is super fun. But apparently this area was really popular with that kind of thing. And there's a story that it was in our guidebook, but it said in the 1400s, some knight got his, got his little ego hurt by a pretty lady. And so in order to defend his manhood, he put out a call that he was going to stand on this bridge and he was going to defeat, you know, all the greatest knights in order to secure his, his manliness. And um, so knights from all over Europe apparently came and he defeated, once he had collected 300 lances and de successfully defeated 300 other knights, I guess he 
that was good, like 300 was the number. So they think that this story might have been like the inspiration for Don Quixote. Yeah. Also, you know, probably like the knight from Monty Python and the Holy Grail and also the Robin Hood story and all kinds of other things. So anywho, very cute town, very old bridge, fun little history, love it. you get close to Lyon the town and then definitely after Lyon the towns become a little sad <laughs> some of them are very dilapidated um, you can tell that they're only alive really because of pilgrims and probably during the season um, like there's not a lot of people living there and um, and they were just kind of in disrepair several of the ones we've been to but this little town is absolutely gorgeous and it's alive and it's thriving and you know there's fish markets and food stalls and uh, lots of locals out in the street and it's just a beautiful beautiful little town so if we could redo it now that we've seen it I would definitely plan to stay the night in Puente de Orbeco um, it's really, really lovely. There's a lot to do here. There's a lot of restaurants and it's just a beautiful, well-kept little town. Here at the end of town, there is a split where you either take the old way or you take a shorter way that goes along the highway. And the locals have written on the pavement like, the road, frowny face, the real way, exclamation point, happy face. <laughs> Super funny. The frowny face is pretty good. We've seen these a few times now, and I know they're scarecrows, and they're supposed to scare away the birds, but it really just sort of looks like someone has lynched a bunch of pilgrims. It's kind of creepy. Well, this place wins roadside stand of the entire Camino. This place is amazing. There's a rose garden and you can sleep here if you need to. Like if you get trapped, there's like air mattresses over there with bedding and stuff. And the best food I've seen, like he's got fresh cherries and watermelon and organic yogurts and pates and pina, um, pineapple, coconut waters and coffee and like, all kinds of fruit I haven't seen anywhere in Spain yet. It's delightful. How are you? Good. Good. What's yeah. What's your name? Thank you. So this place is awesome. We were trying to talk to the guy who owns it and just tell him how amazing it was, but he's like running around like crazy. And so we asked him if we could get him on camera to like talk about how cool this place is and like how he came to be doing this. Well, can we get you on camera? And he's like, yes, yes. And then as soon as we got the camera out, he ran away. So we don't know if there was like a loss in translation or what happened, but anywho, we didn't get it.
So while most of his famous buildings are in Barcelona, this building behind us is a palace that was built by Gaudi, designed by Gaudi. It was actually the last one he ever built, and it was for the bishop here. So yeah, that's a dude's house. Morning. We are in the beautiful city of Astorga and to be honest if we would have known or we would probably have done it differently and we would have planned to stay here in Astorga for a couple of days. It mm -hmm. is a really beautiful city. As you can see behind us the cathedral is insane. So this cathedral is seven year olds to go in. We did not go in last night because when we came by there was like a church service or yeah, some kind of funeral or something going on. So we skipped it. We don't know what the inside looks like but judging from the outside it's probably fairly fabulous. So there are some Roman ruins mm -hmm. and a Roman history museum here that we didn't have time for. So yeah, Astorga is a really beautiful little town. It's got several beautiful, like, how many times can I say they were beautiful? <laughs> it's got several interesting little squares and plazas with, you know, just stunning architecture. And yeah, we would have liked to spend a little more time here. So mm -hmm. I would say if you can, plan to spend like a full day here, like stay two nights instead of one. Um, and have an expiration day. Yeah. All right, my part's over there. All right. <laughs> so today we're going to Rabanal del Camino. Sure. And it's about 20 kilometers. How many miles is that? Like 15-ish. That 15-ish miles today. So it, it's a little bit shorter day than what we have been doing. But yeah. I like that. Yeah. <laughs> I love these shoes. But uh, yeah. Pinky toe. Pinky toe ripped right through them. Uh, I think, or I'll say that these are some of the best shoes I've ever had when it comes to not having knee pain and all that stuff. But um, I think I wore them out a little bit too much before we started. We made about halfway through the Camino. <laughs> Bye guys. So. <laughs> That was a nice memorial, honey. Well served <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Oh yeah. <laughs> nice. probably get some footage from today you know and our new friend our new friend <laughs> so we just came across some teepees 
in the middle of the Spanish farmland. I'm not sure why they're teepees. Yeah, like actual teepees, like Native American teepees. I have no idea why. I better hurry, I've been left behind. We've made it to Rapinal, yeah, Rapinal del Camino. Um, it's a nice day, about 20 kilometers. Um, pretty chill walk, I mean, up and down some hills. Just, it was actually really pretty. I uh, met a friend, so we talked to her uh, from the Netherlands, Daisy, um, and we hung out with her all day walking and talking. I uh, didn't film too much, but we made it here and we're in this municipal. And uh, yeah, it's a cute little, this is just a one room, about 20 bed, little uh, uh, abrogate. Um, it's really nice. The beds seem to be really comfortable. So I think you should be able to sleep pretty good tonight. Here's our little station here and here's the rest of the room here is the shower toilet area and out here abby's at the laundry washing her drawers Oh, yeah, three pairs, so <laughs> wash them every time. Or like. <laughs> nice little grass area with picnic tables. So, did you decide what day it is yet? I have no idea what day it is. I just wanted to look. No, I got distracted uh, from filming. Over here, you got bike racks. Then up the stairs. Hola. Hola. Hello. I'm just looking. Is it kitchen? Yeah, oh, it's right yeah. there. Okay. Yeah. I was I was filming. This is the lovely host here. Is this the other bathroom shower? Right. Yeah. Okay. Another little bathroom shower area. Really nice. Really clean, beautiful kitchen area, a couple of stoves, sink area, everything you need. It's taking a long time, but <laughs> you like I cupcake. am chocolate muffin. <laughs> muffin. <laughs> Good morning. So today we're walking to El Acibo de San Miguel. I like how you like have to sound everything out uh -huh. by the uh -huh. zip your... Uh huh. Just. Just, I'm just seeing it. Say it all, all together. <laughs> but uh, anyways, that's where we're going today. It's, it's not that far. I think it's only like 17, 18 kilometers. Yeah. It's, not, it's a short day. 16, I don't know. So we had an option today. We could either do a short day or we could do a whole 32K into Ponferrada, which is the next big city, yeah. and where we're going to be doing our work days. Yeah. And we decided no more 30K days for <laughs> nope. us. So um, it's not good on our marriage. So <laughs> no, it isn't. So we're just gonna do a 17 hair today. So cute. Also, we're back in the foothills of the mountains now. And yesterday we walked through forest all day long and it was peaceful and beautiful and lovely. And I bet we'll be the same today. And we're getting views back, which is super nice. Although I quite enjoyed the Maseta. But anywho, it's nice to see mountains again. Oh, 
all. I thought it was just Mexico, where like the utility trucks drove around with the music and this is usually the gas men in Mexico. Here in Spain is the bread guy. And they just pull up to the block and just lay on the horn. It's like, not even, ding. Well, it is now, eight o'clock, says the church. Um, and they're like, oh, I'm like, man, I would, I don't think you're allowed to say the kill word or murder word on YouTube, but I'd be very livid at, uh, at the bread man if he'd be showing up at my house at 7.30 in the morning laying on the horn for some baguettes. I like a baguette as much as the next folks, but no bread man, no. Just leave mine at the door. Not sure this is better. Okay, we followed these people the other day and I thought they were so cute. And now we've caught up again with them today and they're absolutely adorable. It's this little couple and I believe they've walked the entire Camino hand in hand. Like through the Mesetta, through the fields, up the hills, through the trails. They've been holding hands the entire time and it's adorable. I would hold Davis's hand but he has gross sweaty hands. <laughs> it's true. You know it's true. Yeah, it's true. Made it. El Cibo. Or, yeah. Very cute mountain village. Also, I didn't wake up till after seven o'clock today. Apparently, I was sleeping hard and my alarm didn't go off. So, thankfully Davis woke up. We were the last folks in the hostel or albergue. And, uh... Well, that's normal. <laughs> <laughs> we're always the last ones out. Yeah, but usually we actually see other people. This morning, we didn't even see anyone else. They were already like out of the building before I got up. So, that's cool. But we have a really short day today. We're just going to the next big city for our work days, which is a city called Panferrada. You can actually see it from here. Well, not like this exact point, but like once we get back on the way, you can see it. So um, it'll be one of those days where we're staring at our destination all day long and it's probably not getting any closer. It'll be like that. Um, but this area is just beautiful. And so it's supposed to be another really, really lovely hike today. So, and we're not in any hurry to get there because we're going to be there for a few days. So, and we've got a hotel room. Wahoo! Okay, so one of the things I've been, I guess disappointed, but just surprised mostly at on the Camino is 
how many of the little churches and chapels, even the ones that are supposed to be like pilgrim churches and chapels, are just not open? Especially if it's not a big city. Yeah. Like the cathedrals have been, but a lot of these other ones have just not been open. And I guess in my mind, I thought, like, because you hear about all these like pilgrim masses and mm -hmm. pilgrim blessings, we've only had like one place where there was a pilgrim mass. Yeah, available. that was about it. Uh, which we're not we're not Catholic, but and we get really confused at mass. But you know, it would still be a nice experience. Yeah. <laughs> but like even these little chapels in the morning, like if you wanted to go in and have some quiet time in the morning before your hike or pray for your safety or you know whatever, there's they're not open and there's nobody in them. So it's kind of it's really surprising to me. Mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't expect that. Also. On this segment of the Camino, since we've left Lyon, there has been a significant improvement in the albergue situation. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Not only are there more of them because there's more towns closer together, but also it seems like now that we're at the end of May, pretty much all of them are open that are going to open, it seems like. Um, whereas before, we felt like some were there but were closed. Mm -hmm. Um, so yeah. And they haven't been full. Like, so, and yeah. they haven't been totally full since we left Leon. So this stretch, and we've met a few people in the last couple of days that aren't booking ahead and they're doing okay. So this stretch from Leon to Saria, you, you might not have to book depending on what time of year you come. Um, obviously we've already done it now all the way mm -hmm. through, but, um, but it seems like the situation has cleared up some yeah. from what it was because even the man uh, last night that was telling us that he isn't booking ahead he said i haven't had any trouble except right there in that middle portion i had to sleep in the woods a couple of times <laughs> i'm like yeah, yeah. we feel you <laughs> aside from the two cafes at the beginning of town yeah. and our albergue it's pretty much abandoned we've seen a whole handful of houses yeah. that are for sale and then you've got quite a few like this one um and this one behind us this way and this one uh well not that one that one's not There's but the, the one other ones it, are yeah. the one past it is they're just all abandoned um they're not they don't have for sale signs on them but it's obvious that families are not here anymore like they're all grown up there's you know trees and grass growing through the windows and doors and um so yeah the, i i truly feel like a lot of these little towns Really, the only thing left in them is pilgrim access points. Yep, I mean, they're, it, they're it. really just, there might be a couple of houses uh -huh. for the people that run the albergues or something like that. But other than that, they are pretty much empty. tripped 46 times yesterday looking at the pretty scenery. Thankfully I didn't fall down but I did catch my toe and stumble about 12 times. <laughs> it's really hard not to want to look at the views but we're also still walking. To, you know the smart thing would be just to stop to take well, in the view. Yesterday's trail was really rocky yes. and really crazy under your feet like there was all kinds of slate and <laughs> yeah. diagonal rock cut but all also, sorts of crazy stuff. But also some incredible views so. Yeah, <laughs> There's a waterfall down there somewhere in the forest. And all the birds this morning. So peaceful. So this walk between Astorga and Pomperada is very steep and very, very rocky. We've come across the bag and the rocks again. There's a lot of slate. It's absolutely beautiful, both days. Completely, just totally beautiful. But um, is it Astorga, is that right? I think so, yeah. Okay. 
Um, but you definitely need to have your really good shoes on this day, get your hiking poles ready. It's shaded, it's beautiful, it's lovely, but it is very steep, very rocky, and sometimes very wet. So be prepared. Be prepared. So we are now entering the town of Melinaseca. Apparently, it's one of the most beautiful pueblos in Spain. Fabulous. La Nesca is a medieval village that occupies a fertile valley of fruit trees, grasslands, and gardens crossed by the Morello River with crystalline water and trout. The name has its origin in the several bridges that existed during the Middle Ages, which were temporarily dry. Small village with, no more, than, with more than 10 centuries of history is a recommended stop for pilgrims who travel to Santiago. Lots of bathers visit our river pool every day during the summer. Including including pilgrims that have a bath after walking along the dry path from Astorga. If you walked all the way from Astorga, go you. That's a long walk. That's about it. I guess that's the swimming More area. Swimming ladders. Yeah. Fun. It's called the swim today. <laughs> Way over there, there's swimming ladders. They're actually right here. So. Oh. So this whole thing is the, where they swim at. Too, too cold for swimming today. Oh, absolutely. Oh, well, there's a little cafe there. I'm telling you, if as long as you have a cafe at the very beginning of a city, you're gonna make a killing. So there's a famous spot called Cruz de Ferro, or Iron Cross here on the Camino. And legend says that when the cathedral at Santiago was being built, pilgrims were asked to bring a stone with them to help in the construction of the cathedral. And so now it's become like a tradition that you bring a stone from your place of origin. Oh, you're fine. Yeah, you're fine. Come on through. You bring a stone from your place of origin and put it at the base of the cross here at Cruz de Ferro. Not really sure why it's here and not like towards the end, but whatever you're supposed to turn your back to the cross to represent you're like done with this part of the journey and you toss your rock some people have said that the rock now symbolizes like all your sin or all your worries or all your whatever and you're supposed to toss it at the foot of the cross so we bought we forgot to bring rocks from home but we did pick up rocks at the beginning of our hike so we'll just have to use those I was warned about this, that the tour bus will show up, a bunch of people will pile out, walk up, throw the rock on the pile, go back, jump on the tour bus and take off. So obviously this is just like tossing a rock on a stone monument, but if you're unfamiliar with the symbolism of it, basically for Christians, there's a concept in the Bible that to really find peace, to really find salvation, forgiveness of sin, you basically take all of your burden, all of your worry, all of everything that's plaguing you, and you toss it at the feet of the cross or basically turn it over to Jesus to deal with. So, and it's sort of the way the Bible describes is the only road to true peace is just to give over, stop trying to fight against it, stop trying to conquer it yourself, stop trying to do all that, turn it over to the feet of Jesus and walk away. So that's sort of the symbolism of what's going on here with the toss and the rock at the foot of the cross kind of thing. All right, you guys, so once you get outside of the town of Molina Seca, the way actually divides. 
So the way on the right goes straight down the highway and into the city of Pampanarada, but you can also take the left, which goes downhill next to the river, and it's a little bit nicer walk. It's slightly longer, but only about 15 minutes, and it also passes one of the Knights Templar castles that are here in the region. So I think we're gonna take the longer route today since we have time and just walk along the prettier path and not along the highway. However, even by taking this route, um, even though it's longer um, and you're still on the road, it does come in to Ponferrada in like the old part of town. So while the other one is shorter, you stay directly on the highway, you kind of walk through all the suburbs and the new part of town and the apartment buildings and high rises and stuff like that. So you kind of skip that by walking this way. All right, we're going adventuring. So this path that we took is pretty much just walking along the road too. It's not the main road into town, but it's still a road. Um, but it looks like right here at this intersection, there is a path that cuts across to a walkway that walks along the bridge or walks along the river to the old Roman bridge and across. So we're gonna try that. Do we know if this trail is maintained? Nope. Do we know if there's snakes? Nope. Do we know if it's flooded? Nope. Are we going? Are we still going? Yeah. Why is it these bugs like suicide bomb in my face? <laughs> Stop it. I've had it happen a few times too. Are we walking on someone's private property? That's a, I don't think. It looked like a road, but it looked like a path on the map. So. Let's Fair just enough. hope that that's right. But this gravel's better than road. checking up stupid heels. He was promising me a castle. I see no castle. See nothing. <laughs> Patience, we're just not there yet. We'll work right by it. Better be great. <laughs> it better be great. <laughs> oh jeez. <laughs> choosing the cheapest private room that I could in the center of town. I got us by accident a spot right across from the Knights Templar Castle. Literally, like it's behind Brian right now. Go me. And there's a, the cathedral's like on the other side of this building. And the cathedral's in our backyard. Look what I did. You guys, we are getting like blessing on blessing today. We were supposed to be in some other room and she asked us if we wanted a room with one bed and we were like, yes, if you have it. So she moved us to this room, which is like the best room. The castle is right out our window and we have our own little balcony. It's amazing. I feel like we just got the best upgrade. I'm so happy. 